wife is right. The wife is right. The wife is right. The wife is right. The wife is right. Good morning, good morning. It is 50 degrees at 8.30. Well, well, well. If you saw yesterday's vlog, you will know that Houston, we have a problem. Well, the last two times I took the kayak out, well, the furthest back one about two weeks ago, when I brought it home and I was washing down the, you know, the hubs and um, the springs and you know, washing all that salt water away. Wi-Fi connected. Told you. You turn. Anyway, T, you messed me up. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I was cleaning the trailer, like you should always, and I did notice some grease on one side coming out of the back of the hub. The back of the hubs kind of has a little rubber ring on it, you know, to keep water and stuff like that. So, mental check point, you know, or, 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 or um, you know, check that I told myself I need to check that the next time I take it out. Well, I ended up spacing it. I ended up taking out the kayak again, but because I knew I didn't check it, I ended up just taking the kayak local. It's like less than a mile. Kind of like a test drive, you know? So anyway, we took the kayak out, and on the way back, I just noticed there was like a, like, not like a grind, but just didn't feel right. And you know, when you drive your trailer enough, you know, that's why I always tell everybody, turn the music off, listen, get used to what it should sound like, and uh, that way is when things arise, you know, right? So, with those two things together, uh, yesterday, fishing conditions, if you watched the video, remember, it was cold and windy and full of snacks. So, went home, and we lifted up the trailer, each one by side, and I spun those wheels. Well, you should get a little bit of play, right? No, there was way too much play, and I'm thinking, okay, it was not like that, because I did the bearings and hubs all myself. Uh, so, from there, I took the first one off. Everything seemed fine, so I'm thinking to myself, why? Did everything just loosen up? Did I, did I need to retighten it? The, 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 the cotter pins in there, everything was exactly where I left it, so why is it so loose? So, took off the first one, inspected it, put it back on, got it ready to put more grease in it, lowered it back down, went to the other side. Once I got to the other side, I started taking off the front, had the bearings buddy, took off the front side, and it looked fine, but still loose. So I'm like going, what the heck, right? So then I start sliding the bearings off and I get to the the, the furthest back, the back bearing on that side. And oh, oh, before I mention it too, when I took off the bearing buddy, there was a little bit of water that came out. So in the video, you, you'll see here too, I'm like, no, nah, that's not a good sign. So, but it still looked, decent inside you know the grease was a little bit smooth so I could tell there had been some water in there but everything the first bearing everything seemed fine got to the one behind it and this thing was completely rusted out so there was a failure either in my part because you know I installed these myself or sometimes you know even if it's something new you know products can fail um, so my guess is is that something on that that back end of the hub where it's got that little rubber seal around the axle it, it wasn't completely sealed so you had water seeping in there so I ended up happening to hammer out that last bearing now unfortunately even with my Thor hammer strength I was not able well I broke the bearing free and I there's an inner part of the, the, the bearing that's called um, a racer and that inner part of the bearing that they call a racer broke off, or the outside of the bearing broke off, so that inner part called the 
racer, it is completely seized onto the axle. I was banging that thing with a crowbar and a hammer. I heated that thing with a torch till it was... Uh, so yeah, uh, my wife recommends that we freeze it. So I'm thinking about getting some, you know, either some, what is it, the liquid wrench stuff to try that, as well as we'll possibly try and freeze it and see if we can't get that. Oh man, I hope we can break it off because I tried so hard yesterday to do it. My goal was to get up this morning and go uh, surf fishing. But my body decided to say, hey, I want you to remember you ain't no young buck no more. Because the simple hammering and pulling on that trailer, I woke up with my back not happy. It is a not happy camper this morning. It's upset. It's not, it's not feeling so hot. So unfortunately, pulling around my little cart on the beach, probably not a good idea today. So what are we gonna do until the trailer place opens? I'm thinking we'll do it the old fashioned way and we're just gonna go bridge fish one of the causeways. It might be full of snacks, it might not. I usually catch stingrays when I do that, but I've never kept stingray. Well, obviously I don't, you know, I don't think people eat them, well, maybe some people do, but they are, are, I'm told, and everybody online says that shark, or not shark, but stingray is the best shark bait. Now, I could use some good shark bait. You cut up their, their, you know, their disc or whatever you want to call it into, depending on the size, it's nice little chunks. It stays on the hook, and sharks absolutely love them. So, maybe we'll chill, cast out some cup bait, and uh, see if we can grab us some stingrays and for bait, cut them up, put them in the freezer for uh, a day that we want to do some shark fishing. All right, we're here. Um, we're trying to, um, what is this, Causeway Park? It's in you know, Cocoa 520. This spot usually got people fishing it, so it must be somewhat decent. So let's try it. All right. Well, it's a little breezy, freaking cold. What is this? Like the the fifth winter we've had this this uh, year in Florida. Whew. Ooh. Anyway, I'm not sure. I think we should probably chuck out. A cup bait real quick. I'm thinking... Oh, I don't even know where. Maybe set up a rod holder right here. Um, I don't even know where to cast out right here, honestly. All right, we'll just play it by ear. First fish of the day, what do we got? Puffer. Dang, that's a big puffer. That might be my biggest puffer ever. Woo! All right, you broke the hook. He's not really puffing up. That's like my biggest puffer. Puffer yet, right there. Super pretty colors. Look at those teeth. It's not really puffing up. Fighting like a puffer. Yeah. 
Yep. Dude, the puffers I'm getting out of here are huge. And of course, he's got my hook again. He's got some weird markings on him. <laughs> Look at that guy. All puffed up. He's not liking this out here. Right? I wish there was a purpose for them, but they're, they're poisonous, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, lots of puffers in here, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I've lost like three hooks to them already, but, you know. I wonder why so many people were showing up. Well, there's a rocket launch, so check it out. We got some fishing in. We didn't get skunked, but it was by far a super good day fishing. We got a couple whiting and over a dozen huge puffers. Some of the biggest puffers I've ever had. I recommend people if you're gonna come fish the Coco Bridge, especially the 520 bridge, the 520 bridge, any of these bridges spots, be ready for it. If you don't, if, if you're Anyway, like I was saying, if you're broke or you can't afford to lose some gear, maybe find a different spot. The unfortunate, the unfortunate thing that I found here fishing in Florida is most of uh, the really easy access spots, um, they, they're full of nuisance fish. Uh, either full of catfish, or in this case, surprisingly we didn't catch a single catfish today, but these puffers are just really bad. Their teeth are pretty sharp. They'll eat right through your gear. They'll artificials, cup bait, different types of cup bait, different types of artificials, live fish. They will go for it all. And unfortunately, I don't think there's really anything that eats them. If you do know, let me know. Or if there's a use for them, bait or something. Because otherwise, um, like I said, I don't know what to do, what to do about them. I mean, like I said, I was hoping to, to get to the beach or get the kayak out. So, I'm on my way to the trailer shop. We're gonna get some new bearings and then maybe see if we can't find something to freeze it with or some liquid wrench. So we'll stop at the hardware store and then spend the rest of the day trying not to aggravate my back and see if we can't fix that trailer so we can get the kayak out this week because I wanna at least get it out once this week. I was shooting for two. Anyway, I will catch you on the flip side. So we got some new bearings and we got some new grease and I even got something to help maybe help me um, break into the uh, break that racer off. Uh, so 
I was talking to him because like I said, I bought the hub and the bearings, the whole kit and caboodle from this trailer shop. So I wanted to, you know, just touch base with them, figure out, you know, was it something I did? You know, obviously I'm not a professional. I did my whole trailer myself, you know. So that's what I wanted to ask them. And uh, I mean, it was kind of hard. I Apparently I installed it correctly. I, I showed them what I did, how I placed everything. I did it correctly. Sometimes these seals just go bad. I mean, it could could have been a mixture of things. So, you know, could have been me, could have been them, could have been the part. I don't know. All I know is that uh, something went bad and that we needed it to replace it. So we'll get on that. And uh, the only thing stopping us now is breaking that, that racer off. So my wife is the one who recommended freezing it. Now, I've always heard you heat it, you know, you, you, you heat it up really, really hot and that's how you can break things. That's how we did in the military and most people I'm talking to asking how to do it, they always say, oh, blowtorch the thing, you know, uh, heat it up, heat it up. But when I say freeze it, everybody goes, ah, like, and that's what I originally thought. But hey, my wife works over at SpaceX, you know, she works on rockets and stuff, so I wasn't gonna second guess it, but, I, I, I'm curious if it works. She says that, that that's what they've done to break some stuff off is, is they, they freezed it. So, you know, I think we might try that. Um, she says there's cans of stuff that are made to do that kind of stuff, but I guess in a, in a pinch, we can maybe use one of those air cleaners, turn it upside down, <laughs> freeze the thing, and then hammer it. Not too sure. But I will let you guys know if I either break my back and give in and decide that I'm gonna have to save up and get a new axle or we broke it free and how we broke it free all right see you at home okay so I just ran to the uh, hardware store to get this freeze off I was gonna do an air can but they actually have something for freezing so we'll try it three channels started congratulations all right so this is the part, the inner part of the bearing that is seized onto the axle here. As you can see, I'll, I'll give you an example of a new one. This inner, inner part right here is what they call the racer. This inner ring here is what is seized onto the axle. What I think what happened was, is this seal right here, maybe I damaged it when I was putting it on, I'm not too sure, but it allowed some water to get in. So we need to make sure that we do this one right. clean this up, take a wire brush, what ended up doing it, freeze off, and you want to make sure that you're not just hammering from one side like I was like a, like a dummy there for a second. You want to pound from, you know, do a couple hits all around, you know, because if it angles it ain't coming nowhere. So as you're hitting it, hit from here, hit from here, hit from here, hit from here, hit from here. Just wiggle it off, freeze it first. It really that that freeze stuff really works into the cracks. 
and you can see the rust just coming out. So hey, turns out the wife was right. Freezing it definitely works. do is before you put these in there grease the heck out of these push the grease in there work it all around the grooves before you put it in there All right, so now that you have this set right here, I use my bearing buddy, because the ring goes right on the outside, so when you hammer it, you're not gonna damage those rubber seals. Then what I like to do is put a block or something on top, and that way I'm hammering evenly. Rubber mallet. We'll just keep an eye on them. Thanks for watching everybody. Maybe we'll take it out tomorrow. Test run. Tight lines.